Hey guys and welcome to this video in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 in the Airbus A320 Neo, the fly-by-wire version of the A320 Neo and today I'm going to be previewing and showing you a new feature which has uh, been released for testing by the developer team at fly-by-wire and it's a feature that many of you, myself included, have all been waiting for and that is SimBrief integration into uh, into the McDo computer. So I'm going to uh, quickly jump into the cockpit and show you how this is looking. I must stress at the moment that this is still in very early testing stages. Uh, I'm lucky enough to get a, uh, a preview of this as one of the QA assessors for it. Um, so I'm going to be doing lots of flights, checking this out uh, with live streams and things. So do hit the subscribe button if you want to follow the uh, development of, uh, of that and watch some of the live streams taking place. But for now, let's just have a look at how it all appears to be working. So, if we, uh, if we have a look and go to SimBrief, and we're just going to make up, a, uh, make up any flight at the moment. So, uh, an EasyJet flight, of course. Uh, we're sat on the ground at Manchester. So, let's say we want to fly to, oh, I don't know. Um, let's go to Palma, Mallorca. So there we go. Simbrief does its uh, does its thing. Uh, everything down here all looks accurate. You can change the call sign as well because if we're normally flying on uh, VATSIM, we have a different call sign to the uh, to the flight number or easier to do anyway. Uh, so there's our route as Simbrief has already uh, done for us. Uh, come down here, check that's all good. Um, all right, so let's generate the. Uh, generate the flight plan there we go click yep 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 so at this point once the flight plan has been generated normally you've got two ways of popping it into the flight simulator number one is to manually input all of the waypoints of the uh, of the flight plan and the other thing the other way of doing it is of course to scroll up to the top and uh, download the FMS and load it into flight sim 2020 in the uh, flight planning globe screen but with this new uh, integration that the fly by wire team will be working on now all we need to do is just get rid of that for a second all we need to do we hop into the cockpit and we'll turn the batteries on and connect a little bit of external power as well so we'll not worry about anything else other than uh, Coming over to the, uh, the flight computer, just turn the sound of the, uh, the aircraft down a little bit, you don't want to be listening to that. Uh, so that's the screen that we, uh, we start up with, we'll just clear the scratch pad where it says flight number in, uh, in use. Uh, so I just want to make sure you can see my cursor, so you can see what we're doing. So we're going to clear the flight plan, uh, flight number in use, get rid of that, GPS primary and last get rid of that and the first thing that you're going to need to do when this uh, gets released is go to the options so here's the options and now you can see that there's a sim brief uh, option so which if we click into so what you need to do next <coughs> is enter your username that you use on sim brief well mine quite predictably easy jet sim pilot there we go so pop that in there so now the aircraft is uh, connected to uh, to SimBrief just through your username it doesn't need a password or anything like that and it occurs to me that this is actually really good for in the future doing community flights because anybody could type that new username in there presumably and download the exact same operational flight plan that we're going to get in uh, in a moment so once that's entered in there we click return and just while I'm on this page as well, you'll also see another new feature which is being added, and that is init barrow. That basically means, as you know at the moment, when you get into the, uh, into the A320, it's set in, uh, in HG as opposed to hectopascals, uh, which obviously want to hectopascals if we're in, the, uh, in Europe. So you can now actually set that 
to be auto which presumably means it's based on the uh, the country that you're in or you can set it to launch in hectopascals every single time so I'm gonna leave that there for now because uh, that's just a nice little feature to have all right so we've already popped the sim reef information in there so now if we go to the init a page you'll see this line here in it request and all that's going to do hopefully is it's going to pull all the information we need from that Simbri flight plan that we filed a moment ago so if I just bring that back up for you so you can just see that uh, so if we click in it request so uplink in progress there it is so we've got our departure we've got our arrival there's a flight number that we made up. Our cost index is automatically put in there as well. And if we look at the cruise uh, cruise flight, uh, the moment we get the right cruise flight, uh, but the uh, the temperature is not quite accurate at the minute. But that's something else that uh, that we're testing and reporting back to the uh, the programmers and the developers. Um, I have the utmost respect for anyone that has been able to code this aircraft the way they are doing at the fly by wire team. It really is fantastic. So we can just clear that little message there that came up, and then if we go to the flight plan, as if by magic all of the route is in there so this is pretty much like using uh, company routes or getting your flight plan uploaded by data link as they do in the real world of course what you still need to do as they do in the real world is you need to be able to go through all of your waypoints as you scroll down uh, to make sure that they all match up because in the real world you can have last minute changes to your operational flight plan which may differ from the data link that you've got uh, being sent so it's always good practice to make sure that all of those match up with what has been downloaded from Simbrief. Of course this uh, is a simulated world so realistically they should match but still just good practice. Okay so all of those are there but the one thing that is not there however as you'll notice is that it goes direct from Manchester at the moment to Sanba because we still need to put in our SIDs and our STARS so that's pretty straightforward. Click on the uh, Departing airport, click on departure. Uh, our Simri flight plan actually says we're departing runway 23 left, uh, which in the real world we probably wouldn't at the minute. It'd be 23 right just because traffic is uh, quite low. So it's a Samba 1 Yankee departure. Pop that in there and insert it. And that all lines up quite nicely. Scroll down to the bottom, you can see the airways are in there as well, which is beautiful keep going all the way down to the bottom and at, uh, at Lille we'd need to have a look at entering our arrival star so we'll just do that as well um, so we would be going for runway 28 according to the flight plan uh, which for some reason is a VR approach not uh, entirely sure if that's accurate or not I would have to check the charts uh, but we'll pop that in anyway so VOR approach to runway 28 um, and the start is the VLC 3 November so we'll just pop that in as well there it is VLC 3 November insert that and go back to the flight plan and it's given us a distance there of 956 miles. Well, if we just compare that, we've got a distance on our flight plan of 962. So they are very, very close. In fact, that's just updated to 983, uh, possibly just because we've had to do a VOR approach. So uh, instead of an ILS approach, don't know if uh, that is missing or if that's accurate because I've not got the, chi uh, the, uh, the charts up for, uh, for Lille at the moment all right but all in all that works very very well and obviously you'd then just fly that like a normal route but the one thing we also need to have a little look at and this is really really neat if we go back to the uh, do menu and uh, go to the uh, the ATSU page and the AOC menu I think it's the AOC menu yeah here's another uh, little feature that's also still in testing at the moment um, is the performance weight and balance page well if we go and click on that you can see there that we've got block fuel taxi fuel and trip fuel now all of those figures that you see there have been automatically pulled in from your uh, sim brief flight plan uh, if I just scroll down 
uh, on the flight plan. Let's just go a little bit lower. There we go. So we can see everything. Uh, everything is written just there. So our planned block of fuel, which is just here, seven three four four. Well, that is correct. That's been loaded in. Our taxi fuel, you can see there, of two hundred kilograms. That's loaded in. And our trip fuel of 5071 has also been loaded in. Uh, so they are all accurate. And if we just have a little look at the uh, fuel on board that we've got there. So our fuel on board at the moment is 9420. However, if we then press the refuel load screen, that changes it to 726. Zero, which is slightly below our total plan block, but that is something that we're still working on. That is still uh, rounded very, very close to what we need. The good news is, of course, that you can actually change these figures. If you've made your flight plan, uh, you have a look through, you see some bad weather on uh, the weather charts. Uh, let's say, do you know what? We're actually going to take nine tons of fuel as our block fuel. Uh, so we change that. If we just look up here then uh, we just clear actually the uh, flight plan off the screen so you can see that so we'll just change we're going to change the uh, block fuel to nine tons nine thousand kilograms pop that in there it is not yet loaded you can still see it's seven two six zero however the moment you press the refuel screen we'll load that in and it has increased so it's now given us the uh, it should give us the amount that uh, we need of course remember it's not trip fuel plus taxi fuel that you're looking for there's contingency fuel in there you've got your alternates you've got your final reserves so they're all uh, all there as well now if we go back to the uh, the init b page uh, that's where you'd go in, set your zero fuel weights, your zero center of gravity weights which i'm not going to do in this little uh, little video um, so that is uh, is better. Do you know what? I will just very quickly let me just bring the uh, flight plan back up for you, just to show you uh, this little feature. So the zero fuel weight is five nine point three, and I'm just going to make up a center of gravity at the minute. Uh, in fact, actually, if we go to the weight screen okay this isn't going to be entirely accurate because it's not a zero fuel weight center of gravity these weights as well are also loaded based on uh, on your fuel that's come from your sim flight plan at the moment it doesn't look like it's affecting your payload so the payload for sim brief doesn't accurately represent this payload you still need to we're still needing to go in and uh, edit this manually at the moment but the fuel is exactly right um but if I just pop that center of gravity in for now, 21.66, uh, 21.6, I'll round that up actually, 21.7. Pop that in, we then get the fuel planning uh, button comes alive, so you can press that, and all that does is you click that, the aircraft then estimates and tells you how much fuel you would need to uh, to perform that flight. Now, if you look at that, the block fuel there is a lot less than our total of 7.3. And the reason for that is just because the fuel burn isn't quite right yet. But obviously, you can go in and edit your block fuel. So the block fuel we've got is 8.9. Pop that in there. Uh, so that goes and changes all that. We then need to pop our trip wind in, uh, which is, where's the trip wind? Is, oh, H0. I don't think I've ever seen that before. <laughs> so no trip wind, pop that in. Uh, and now if we go to our fuel prediction page, you'll see that uh, it has worked all those out for you as well. So. As I said, this is still in the early testing stage for the QA developers, but I am going to be using this aircraft now for uh, upcoming live streams because that SimBrief integration is just uh, its fantastic. So my congratulations and hats off to the guys that are working really hard. I'm very privileged to be able to get an advanced copy of this and help them uh, and test that out. Uh, but I did just want to show you what is coming. So, um, yeah. Let's uh, we'll keep working on that.
and hopefully that will be uh, released uh, shortly in the new stable version that is upcoming 0 0.5.0 I believe that is but uh, hope you enjoy that little preview of what is to come uh, I'm gonna leave you now with the uh, view of this wonderful flyby wire Christmas livery uh, that is available with the uh, developer version download on the uh, on the flyby wire site so i'll pop a link to that and uh, in the video description thanks for watching guys if you enjoyed that please do hit the subscribe button for more updates live streams and of course the tutorials as well drop us a comment tell uh, tell the flyby wire guys what an amazing job they've been doing and uh, we look forward to seeing many many more of the new features that are in the pipeline still yet to come I, uh, the, I couldn't c imagine flying this aircraft without their uh, without the flyby wire mod. It's uh, it's turning it into uh, slowly but surely it's turning it into a study level aircraft, which uh, I can't believe at the moment for everybody is all for free. So uh, words don't describe the gratitude that we we all owe them for that. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you all again very soon.